In this video, I'm going to continue with uh, the tutorial in XPP, and I've changed the ODE file now. Now I'm looking at what's called the substrate depletion model, which is um, a, a model for uh, oscillations in, um, for example, biochemical systems. And, uh, and you can see the equations here in the ODE file. Uh, we have uh, x variable, and that has a constant source uh, rate with uh, rate delta. And then we have a linear loss, so that just decays away exponentially in the absence of anything else. But then if y is present, then it degrades x even more quickly. Uh, and there's a squared effect in the influence that y has on that degradation term. And then the y equation, we have a source term proportional to x. So in other words, x is involved in producing y. And um, y also increases its own production at a rate proportional to how much is x, how much x is there. So you can imagine that as being, let's say, um, um, a bi or even a trimolecular reaction where a couple of y molecules have to encounter an x molecule and that triggers the production of more y and then there's linear decay of y and you can see that we've uh, non-dimensionalized um, by the time constant of that uh, y decay and then there's in this non-dimensional version of the equations there are two parameters delta and uh, k and we've got initial conditions 0, 0. And you'll notice when delta is equal to 0, that gives us a steady state. But as soon as delta is not 0, that'll change. And now we have two lines here that we did not have in our previous uh, ODE file from the previous videos on the playlist. Um, you'll see here there's an ampersand or an at sign in front of each of these lines. And um, those indicate internal um, XPP parameters that are not about the parameters of the equations, they're about the display or other numerical parameters. And so total is the total amount of time we integrate. So every time you do an initial condition and then click with the mouse or type in an initial condition and let it go, it'll integrate for a certain amount of time and that's what this 100 is indicating. Um, and so that gives you the full like the that that determines the length of the curves that you see in the phase plane and then these four parameters here determine the horizontal and vertical limits of the plot in the xpp window not in the auto window and then the x plot and y plot variables uh, indicate to auto or to xpp how the variables x and y should be plotted so x plot is XPP's way of saying the horizontal uh, axis, and the x variable should go on the horizontal axis, and the y plot is the vertical axis, and the y variable is being set as the variable to plot on that direction. Okay, so let's take this and drop it into XPP. And we get our XPP window. Let me just pull that down onto the screen. Here we go. So you can see here's our x versus y plot with the minus two to two horizontal and the minus two to two vertical limits. And let's start off by plotting some null clines. And you can see there's one crossing at the middle there. Let's see what that is. It's a singular point. I'll click nearby. And I get, okay, so it's asking me if I want to print eigenvalues. Oops. So I'll pull that on screen here so you can see what I'm doing. Here, I'm gonna say yes to that. And you can see, hiding back here, the eigenvalues just popped up and you can see that they're both negative. Here's negative one tenth and negative one. So that or the origin here is a stable node. And uh, it's, oh, here's another window pop up that's asking me, do I wanna plot the strong sets? I'm gonna decline. If you're interested, you can try doing that. And let's let's put this equilibria window down here so we can watch and see uh, when that pops up. We can see what the eigenvalues are if we do that again. Okay, so, uh, and we can draw some initial condition curves. So I'm gonna hit I for initial conditions and M for mouse, and then uh, click on points in the plane. 
And you can see here is one initial condition. We'll do another one. And what you can see emerging here is that classic, uh, you know, pair of U-shaped curves, or you know, four different curves that form two U-shapes back to back, and they're hugging the slow direction of approach to the stable node. All right, so that gives us a pretty good idea of what's going on there. Let's set up for uh, doing some auto continuation. As I mentioned at the beginning, the substrate depletion model is kind of one of the one of the classic models for uh, explaining uh, oscillations. And uh, I'm going to focus here on XVP instead of on the biology, but that's another discussion to be had. So, um, so what I'll do now is I will. Um, make sure we have an initial condition that's set correctly. So I'll open up the initial condition data window. And so you'll notice this is right on the crossing. And if you look at the equations down here, you can see that for the parameter delta equals zero, which is where we're at. And I'll pop open the parameter window so you can see that. So I have currently delta set to zero and k set to point 0.1. So that means that x equals zero, y equals zero are the coordinates of that steady state. And you can look at that and see that from the equations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, I'm focused on a window that I'm not seeing perhaps. Oh, no, it was just slow to change focus. That was very slow, unusual. All right, so I'm going to delete all that and just put it down to an initial condition of zero, which is going to be a steady state. So that's a good spot to start XPP go, or uh, auto going. So now that I have the steady state in the initial conditions and the parameter set to delta equals zero, I know that my auto run will start OK. And so I'm going to go file auto and auto pops up bring that in so you can see that and now you can see we've got our window so let's go through uh, as always I like to run through these first three ones before I hit run and so I'm going to check that the parameters are ordered correctly I'm interested in a bifurcation diagram using Delta and that's par one the first parameter so that's good and that's just because of the order that I had them listed off here and that happens to be the order I'm interested in, so I'll leave that as is. And then the axes, so I'm going to go with the high-low. And high-low just means for a steady state, it's the high-low, it's all the same. For a periodic solution, if we were plotting those as well, it would, it would plot both the high point of the oscillation in the plotted variable and the low point. So you would get two dots, one high, one low. And that's what the meaning of that, um, that option is. So not such a big deal for steady states, but when we do this, the periodics in a minute, you'll see why that's um, a useful uh, projection. And now let's see, so we wanna plot the X coordinate. Let's see, X coordinate. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So we're gonna plot the X coordinate of the steady state uh, against Delta and then um, X min. So we're starting from delta equals zero. So minus 0.5 will just make the window a little bit bigger than the bottom end. And we can go up to an X max of 2.5. I think that's good. And the vertical window three to minus three, that might be a little bit big, but let's leave it as that just in case. And we can zoom in if we want to later. All right, so the axes look good. And now the numerics. So this is a whole bunch of numerical parameters. And I'm just gonna um, run through quickly what the relevant ones are here that I wanna mention. And that is, so this DS parameter, 0.02, that's a starting value for um, the st step size as, as auto goes through the bifurcation diagram. So if, if this is too large, auto will automatically decrease it. If it's too big, it, auto will increase it. And so what you need to do is give it some boundaries not to exceed in either direction. So the minimum step size will be uh, 0.001. So if auto would otherwise want to go below that, I'm stopping it from going any smaller a step size than 0.001. And um, that's basically to prevent it from 
going overboard and, and calculating too many points. And if you start to see things not looking correct because that's too large, then you can drop that. The other one to watch out for is DS Max. If this is too big, then you'll see uh, a jagged nature to your curves. And then the ones that I always forget to set before I run my auto, my XBP auto is these two, the minimum parameter value and the maximum, but we're okay here. This one is set to zero. That's where Delta is starting and Delta, this will force it to go no higher than two. And you remember I plotted the plotting window I set to go from minus 0.5 to 2.5. So the window will be 0.5 bigger on either end than where I end up calculating, assuming we get a calculation that runs. All right, so those all look good. And so let's just run and see what we get on the steady states. Ah, look at that, lovely. So the steady state will start at zero and it'll increase to a maximum X value. And then it undergoes a bifurcation. So I haven't talked about this in the previous videos, but let's look at this window here to decipher what's going on. Um, and maybe I'll zoom that a little bit because I think that looks pretty small. All right, so what you should be able to see here is four lines in the bifurcation output. So you can see um, this column here, I believe that indicates that we're all on one branch. This is all just one single curve coming around. So that's labeled the first branch. And then there's a whole bunch of points that are on there that it's not paying any special attention to. So if I bring that to the front, you can see and you can see where they are. It actually does look a little jagged. There's clearly a points, maybe one here, one here, one there. And then there's a bit of a corner there. And then it comes around the max with another corner. And then the only ones that are labeled are these ones, one, two, three, and four. And those are the ones that are listed here. So the first one, the very first one is delta equals zero. And you can see the parameter value listed here, at delta equals zero, and that is 0.1. And then there's another um, nine points, or 10 points, uh, nine, nine points between that one and the first identified interesting point, which in this case is an HB, that's a Hopf bifurcation. So that means we ought to find an oscillation emerging from there. And so we can follow that up in just a second. And then we have another HB at the other end of that. So that's at three, which is this one here where that stability is regained. And then we have an EP. Now the EP is just our endpoints. That's where I told it to stop there, or maybe XPP or auto will give up because it uh, has trouble following the solution after that point. So it, EPs are kind of not that interesting, but maybe indicative that you have something to fix in your parameter values. So the interesting ones here are the two hopped bifurcations. Let me first, before I do anything else, let me try and smooth out that curve. And you can see how I have to reset the diagram here to do it all over again. So what I'm going to do is I'd like to start right at this point without having to re-enter the initial condition and all that. If you go back to the XBP window, or actually if we could pull up, let me make this, shrink this down again. So if we go back here, you'll notice that parameter values will have changed as we so you can see here the parameter values and delta is now all the way at two, which is way out here at this point here. And so, um, and so we've got to reset it. So the easiest way to do that is to go back to this window here and say grab. And you'll notice the plus sign at this one just got bigger. I could use the tab key to jump to two, three, four, or back to one again. And I'm going to go back to one. That's going to grab that coordinate and all the information needed to start over from that one. And then I'm going to hit File, Reset Diagram. That'll get rid of everything there. So there's a, a window that pops up and asks me, do you want to destroy auto diagram and files? It sounds quite dramatic, but yes, I do. All right, and then um, I'm going to clear this. And now I have nothing except what I grabbed before. And I'm just going to hit run. Oh, wait, nope. I wanted to make this, uh, I wanted to increase my step size or decrease my step size. So I'm going to go back to the numeric parameters and I'm going to change the DS max down to 0.1, one fifth as much. And we if we do see any kinks still, they'll be one fifth as frequent. 
So I'll set that one and now I will run and see what we get. Steady state. And you can see that does look smoother now. Um, and if you feel like it's not smooth enough, maybe you see a kink there. So you can go back and decrease your DS max one more time. I'm going to stop that with that right there. And I'm going to grab another point. Let's go to that hop bifurcation and see if we can follow that hop bifurcation. So I hit tab to go to two after hitting grab and then return to choose that one. And now it should have everything it needs to continue from that point. And so I'm just going to run. And now if I hit Oh, it doesn't even give it me as an option. So it's only giving me the option. Oh, I could extend. If this had been the end of a, a curve and I wanted to continue it, I could have extend and it would continue following a steady state. But I want to follow a periodic that's emerging from the hop bifurcation. So I'll hit periodic and out goes. Oh, and now it's going overboard. What it's doing is it's following the periodic, the hop bifurcation. From the hot fabrication, it's following a periodic that emerged through here. And for some reason, it's going completely nuts. And it's just going in circles around tracking uh, this hot bifurcation back and forth. Wow. Well, that's not so good. It's still going and going and going. All right. Well, I will kill that. But this is, um, this is basically what I wanted to illustrate. And I've already gone pretty long on this uh, video. So I will end it here and hope that that is enough to get you going on a whole bunch of different uh, tasks in XPP Auto.